Hey you guys, welcome to July. I'll be doing some harvesting today, so I thought I would bring you guys along and to show you guys some of the plants that I've planted this month. So let's get going. Things in the small garden grow at a slower rate because I got so many plants packed into the same space that if you don't get them pruned well enough, it would start shading off each other. Therefore, you know, it's just not providing enough sun for all the plants. They just grow slower that way. So right now it feels like summer has just finally arrived in this garden. First off, I want to show you guys is I'm so excited about this is the second year it started to fruit more. This is the rose apple, rose apple fruit. And I want to show you guys how delightful this is. I have done a previous episode in the past at my friend's mom's house and that fruit was so delicious. I actually saved those seeds and this is the child of that tree. So let's start off by trying this fruit with you. This thing, it's on its second year. Last year, I got like three fruits out of it. A lot of fruits were dropping and that's totally normal with fruit trees. The first couple of years is kind of like their practice round. You know, once they are fully mature and strong enough, they would start holding more of the fruits. So I got to protect it due to the critters. I actually got two bags is just really like for security, you know. So this fruit actually dropped. Mm smells like perfume it smells like a rose usually you want to pick the ones that are really ripe which means they either just dropped as the perfect time to eat it because it would stay a little more crunchy this one got starting to get a little bit sunburned because we had a really hot day yesterday but this is what it looks like let's have a taste mm, it's hollow i can mm-hmm mm. Uh, it's just like eating a rose. It's like a, a rose and a longan or dragon's eye, tropical fruit. It's like that sort of a sweetness, but drier taste. And then it smells just like a rose. Mm. So good. And then it comes with a little seed inside. So there's actually quite a few flowers that dropped on this tree, uh, but I still have a little more harvest than last year. Mm. I'll show you guys the inside. Thank you, tree. <laughs> there we go. Another thing that's really interesting is that the purple yam that I've, you know, have been growing the past couple of years. And I remember I did a video, uh, plant the new ones again this year. One of my viewers commented that it needs to have the humidity in order for it to form those little potatoes. This year, I finally see a few on this plant. The only thing I did different was that I didn't grow it from slip this time. I mean, this particular plant, I actually, you know, when I harvest that tuber, when that tuber starts sprouting again, I put that entire thing in the ground. So I don't know if it takes a little more time, like when the tuber gets mature enough, then the plant will start producing these like air potatoes or that it does get a little more humidity here. This one does get the most sun out of the few that I have planted in this location. I've started some more green beans here. This is the variety that my friend's dad gave me is more stringless. The first round of green beans, I barely get to eat them because the critters kept munching on them. Finally, they have left some for me to harvest today. I have learned about, you know, how their behavior works. And the things with rodents and mice is that they don't like new things when you put things in different places and they find that it's not what they're used to, they will leave it alone for a while until they get used to it again. They'll get back to, you know, nibbling at things, stuff like that. And so I just have to constantly change things up. I would put a bag over some fruits for like a week or so, and then I would take it off or put a different kind of bag to just kind of keep make, you know, keep on making things look a little different around here. And so far 
fingers crossed, it's been working. <laughs> It definitely takes more effort that way though. If you guys have some suggestions on how to take care of the rodents, please leave your comment below, you guys. I'd really appreciate it. Next to the green beans, I wanna turn the spotlight to this pepper plant. My mom grew it from seed. She is so in love with a couple of the chili peppers that she's grown this year. This is, I believe, is like a Thai chili, so it's super spicy. We don't eat a lot of spicy food, but Peppers are just so beautiful to grow. <laughs> All right, let's get to some other plants. This is the African blue basil. It grew so well in the winter here and definitely continuing to grow and growing even faster in the summer right now. It was stressing out for a while though. The, the leaves weren't so green and I noticed that when I picked up the pot, it was so light. So if you guys ever question if you're over or under watering, if you have it in a container, just pick it up if it's so light, you definitely know it needs watering. So that's exactly what I did to this one. And I added some Climate Guard fertilizer and it popped right back up. Look at the beautiful, distinctive purple lines on these green leaves, you guys. Oh, so beautiful. And then right behind, you got a crazy amount of uh, water chestnuts growing out here. The root beer plant is taken off too. Even the flowers look so interesting. I can't wait. I'm going to put it in a bigger pot. It's going to look even better than this. This is the Acerilla cherry tree. It's got so many flowers last, I think a couple of months I was showing you guys in one of the videos. And then most of the flowers dropped. A few of them formed fruits. If you guys know what's going on with this tree, how I can get it to fruit more, like the flowers that stay on, let me know in the comments below, you guys. I've tried doing a little more water or a little less water, just kind of, I'm still trying to figure out how to get the flowers to stay on. The other day, I noticed that those fruits that were almost ripe were gone. The only one that's left, I bagged it. So let's see if this one has dropped or it's still hanging on the stem because I like to eat them when they're super ripe when you just kind of like touch it and it'll fall right down. That's the perfect time to eat these cherries I think because they they smell really good and the flavor intensifies like jam. Oh. Look at this sun dried, almost dried. Mm. Oh my god. Mm. It tastes exactly like the shirt, um, what is this? The Acerilla cherry jam. They sell those in Asia, but with, but not as sweet because those ones have a lot of added sugar. Something else that's so exciting to me are these pigeon peas. It's the first time I've seen them flower and setting beans. I can't wait till this tree, a tree, this plant grows even taller because it's going to provide me with so much protein and just, just so delicious. This is a drought tolerant once it gets established. That's why I finally have found the perfect match with the caper bush. So this caper bush finally found a spot from right here. I just planted, um, about a week ago. It is pretty late in the season to start growing jicamas and it is my first time growing them, but I'm gonna try anyway. It's okay if the tubers are, you know, a little smaller than I would like it to be. I'll still be really grateful. They do usually require like four months of growing. So um, I'm really hoping that you know, being in Southern California, there would be enough time to, uh, or, you know, a warm time for them to grow. They are on the upper level here so that they can get the most sun possible with this trellis, since this is a vine and yeah, it's starting to climb actually. It's, it's taken off quite all right. So I'm really excited to see. I always love growing new things and um, yeah, experimenting and see, and see what happens. Right below the jicamas are the white squashes. I don't know the actual English name for it since my friend's dad, you know, they brought the seeds from China and that's what they call them, white squashes. But you can harvest them at the size of like a regular cucumber and it tastes like a really delicious cucumber to me. They love to stir fry them or put them in soups, which I think is really tasty. Also, if you pick them a little older, but when you pick them when they're really tender, 
they're just really delicious like a cucumber so we do have time to get started with cucumbers do the small pickling types of cucumbers you can always pick up pick up some starter plants that would save you some time I'm really hoping that these would grow as fast as cucumbers. <laughs> oh, and then these little French melons. I think they're just not getting enough sun, so they're not really getting that big. There is one of them that is growing, uh, doing the best out of all of them, and that's the one on the Lufa trellis. That thing right now is a little smaller than a softball, but it's getting there. Here are some beautiful sunset runner beans. It's just like the scarlet runner beans, but these ones are called sunset. Got this beautiful apricot, pink, coral, orangey mixture. I really love this. And then with the scarlet runner beans, the seeds started dropping and getting new plants. So you can definitely grow some more beans right now. Just make sure that you get a variety that grows fast. And usually beans and cucumbers grow pretty fast. I find that the fastest way to start seeds, especially for summer crops, is that you use a heating mat with a dome um, and a growing tray. And growing under, when you put them under grow lights, things definitely grow a lot faster there compared to even in an outdoor sunny setting. My mom and I had tackled a couple of projects this month. One of them being this ground cherry. She helped me sew this baggie so that I can put this entire seven feet tall plant inside. The fruit seems to sit bigger and the flowers are much bigger than the, the Aunt Molly. Actually, I saw the Aunt Molly's at Home Depot. I picked one up. So I'm gonna start comparing the two and see. This is the most recent project I was tackling with my mom. She is such a trooper helping me out to do this. I wanted to build a cage, kind of picture like your chicken coop, I guess to house these starter plants because the critters sometimes would get to the leaves of these greens. So any kind of precious plants, plants that I, you know, ship out and uh, maybe cruciferous plants sometimes can go in here. This should avoid the cabbage butterflies from entering as well. One of the living mulch that I love growing year after year is the Purse Lane. Now I got the wild variety and the hybrids. The hybrids give off really beautiful flowers and the wild variety just grows all over the place by themselves because they, they seed really well. So ground covers tend to grow quite fast, especially with Purse Lane. I propagated a few of these uh, this hybrid variety to lay them in different places and they just start taking off really fast. So look into some wild uh, variety of things, look into some uh, living mulch. I have a video sharing my favorite living mulch uh, with you guys. I'll link it down below as well. Another one that's growing really fast is the Bacoba. I just laid them down again. I thought I lost that plant in the winter, but was able to find one start shooting up and that was all it took and they started to grow around this this taro sort of a plant i think it'll be really beautiful to have the bacoba fill in the space and let it kind of trickle down all right let's do some more harvesting Thank you. one time the critters were even getting to the the green ones Another thing that I did with the green onions is I've started planting it in here because the, the mice love the green beans. So I started planting it around here because they actually, they don't like onions and strong smells like that. Thank goodness I protected these cucumbers. Thank you. I always like cutting everything with a little bit of the stem in place so that 
you can save them a little longer. Of course, you know, the fresher the better, but just in case you want to keep these for a couple of days, My mom's beautiful peppers. With sometimes with so many of them, we love to just pickle them. That way, you can really preserve them. I'm so thankful for this harvest, especially with the critters being an issue around here. Mm. Thank you, you guys, for joining me out here today to see what, you know, is in season right now in this garden and what I've planted in this month. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Please like, share, and subscribe to this channel if you have not, and hit the bell notification button. I would love to see you guys right back here again very soon. If you want to pick up some seeds or plants, be sure to check out my shop at wendyland.com. I'll leave the links of everything that I've mentioned in this video in the description box below. Happy gardening. See you right back here in the next one, guys. Bye.